All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. Today I'm going to do a video on uh, a comment I got from uh, one of our subscribers asked me how we would defend uh, double tight and then I think some uh, tight wing stuff out of the I formation, two back. So I'm going to take a look at it structurally. Um, I think it's tough for me to determine exactly how we would defend some things that I don't know exactly what the runs are, what the throws are. But I'm just going to tell you structurally what we would do and, and the issues it creates. And I think the things that we do on defense that make it a little bit easier for us um, from a structural standpoint. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them the last five or six years. If you're looking for highly affordable, highly reliable, great customer service, check out GameStrat. Dome Headwear, the head company we use with uh, Play Fast Football, Bishop Kenny High School. Uh, you can change the hats, completely customizable, change the enclosures. They could be fitted hats, they could be Velcro, they could be snapback. You change the style, you can change all the colors. You build a hat exactly the way you want it. Every hat has a story. Check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use provide us with our coaches gear, uh, practice gear, sideline gear, our player spirit packs, our uniforms are distributed from them, uh, and they do a ton of other things big in the baseball world. So uh, it's not just cloth. It's not just football. So make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, which is the playbook software we use uh, if you want to take your program to the next level, I highly recommend Just Play. I use it for my Patreon site. We use it for our installs here. We use it for team meetings. Uh, this unique tool and unique feature that they have allows you to quiz your players on game plans, installs, and you can use videos and diagrams. So you can use good and bad examples from your team, maybe some college film or other film that you get, plug it right in, quiz your players, test their understanding. So check out. All right, just play Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You get thousands of reps. You don't need a partner. Set it up right in your weight room in the off season. Uh, you can do it in season. You can set them up in the weight room. You can uh, build things where you can set them up outside. You know, put two by fours or put things in the ground. You can set them up. It fits on every attachment, every squat attachment, or every rack attachment. I'm sorry, in the weight room. So if you want to get thousands of reps, work on striking, being violent with your striking without needing a partner, not teaching anybody else how to hold a bag or a shield. Just one player and the Difference USA machine. Highly recommend them, so check them out. So uh, one, of our, one of our subscribers uh, sent a uh, request on how we would defend double tight, uh, two back, I guess, eye stuff, or could be shotgun to me. It, it's kind of uh, all similar in nature from the structure of it, right? And then uh, it said some, some wing eye stuff, so I'm assuming maybe that's tight end wing with two backs uh, in a more traditional eye or a two back set rather than wing T. Uh, and, and I'll talk about the structure of it and what we do. Um, again, difficult for me to defend the exact offense when I don't know what the runs and passes are, but the structure is always easy to look at and kind of go through why we do what we do and why I like what we do and then why I think the offense does a good job of doing what they do, right? So for us, if we were uh, in our 4-2-5 days, right, we're a split field coverage team, we're a quarters based toolbox. So the backside nub stuff for us is something that we teach early in camp, early on, because for us, what we're always trying to figure out is on the backside, a wayside of coverages, we always know that we have to deal, all right, with a single side. So when we teach our safeties, our safeties are hybrid players, so our corners are hybrid players, meaning they don't trade sides. So our safeties and corners have to be able to play passing strength and away from passing strength. All right, so every safety and corner for us has to know how we play single side deals. Okay, so seeing teams that use the single side as a nub, that's one of the things we're always going to have to carry early in camp is how do we want to play single side nub structures. Now, again, for us, the beauty of it is it's not different structurally than a team that wanted to line up in, in regular two back for us. All right, if we were playing with our first adjustment, which is a sky adjustment with a safety down to be a D-gap force player, corner over the top playing all the deep routes of that single width receiver, okay, the only things that, that change a little bit for me, we have more calls in our menu when he's single width outside than we do when he becomes a nub. But when he goes to the nub, the beauty for us is we've already got the answer built in and Here's why I think offenses do it. So we have the answer built in. The corner's not going to line up and defend there, so the corner's going to come in, all right, and play 
the deep half or the deep routes of the number one, and the number one happens to be the tight end. Okay, so for us structurally, there is no issue it creates. It doesn't create all right a structural issue for us. What it creates is, and this is where offenses get good, it creates a skill set issue. Okay, so. What they're doing is they're bringing a body in, and usually on offense, if, if this is their base group, then this kid may not be able to line up out there. Maybe he can if he's that good of a player. If it's a sub package, then we have to look at it as possibly us being a sub package because what it's going to do is it's going to take a guy that they bring back into the core, all right? They add a helmet, they add a body into their core runs, all right? Which means we have to figure out a way to add a number, right? Football's kind of just math in a way, all right? And, and offense and defense is really just numbers. So if they create a number, we got to create a number. Well, we don't have a problem structurally doing that. The issue is, do I have corners that have the skill sets to do it? Because this now, essentially, to me, becomes about the same as playing a safety as a robber player. We're going to be flat-footed. We're going to be reading off that nub tight end. We have to defend the deep half of the routes that he runs. Well, if he puts his hands on people in the run game, he can't attack the deep half, so it's almost... You know, you could maybe look at it as, as, as a, it's not a crack replace deal, but it's similar in the teaching of it. The guy that's running the route is putting his hands on another player, can't run the route. There's no need for me to defend routes that that player can't run. So to me, it's very similar to teaching a robber concept. So if we knew that this was the personnel grouping and this is what they like to do, then for us, the answer might be adding another safety in there because that's a guy that has to play flat-footed quarters robber technique all the time. So if we knew that that was the personnel and that was the matchup, we could add a safety. But if it's not, then our corners have to be able to play that deal, and it becomes a skill set issue. Now, why does it become a skill set issue? First off, I have to train that corner how to play that coverage. Now, the choice we have as coaches is if we don't want it to be a skill set issue, We could leave the corner down and play the safety there, and we could say as coaches, the safety plays Robert technique. He knows how to play flat-footed off a tight end. He knows how to play a tight end vertical. He knows how to fit versus tight ends that are involved in the run game when we play our quarters, because we're going to do the same thing over here. That kid's essentially playing the same thing. So if this side for us was quarters, to me, in theory, it's really not that much different for that safety. If he puts his hands on, I'm running the alley and trying to fit between the nickel and the mic. If he's to the flat, I'm going to rob post lead curl of one, or I'm going to, uh, depending on game plan, maybe I can just help in the post. If he's under, it's the same deal. If he's vertical, I've got him man-to-man. -man. So over here, it's kind of the same thing. If he's out to the flat, he's not mine. If he's under, he's not mine. If he's vertical, he's mine. If he's got his hands on blocking, I'm going to run the alley between the will and the corner, or I'm going to become a cutback player behind the will if the ball goes the other way. So what this does is this puts us in a position where the kids that are playing it already have the skill set to do so. Okay. Now, what this does, though, is this creates an issue, and again, this is why offenses are good. This kid knows how to play flat force. He knows how to play cover two concepts. But now with this width being this tight, does he want to be down there against those type of bodies? And do you want him down there against those type of bodies? Right? So the structure of it is fine. The structure of it doesn't bother us one bit. If I want to eliminate a skill set that I have to teach, I can play this in cloud and not sky because we already play that coverage. But do I want that body type down there with these body types? And if he's getting power counter with a seven technique and, and he's getting pullers, do I want him on pullers? Or do I want the bigger body type that we think is more of a edge center down there? But now again, that means He's got to have another tool in the toolbox because he's got to be taught how to play, all right, uh, flat foot robber technique. So normally for us, what do we choose? We, we choose to teach him how to play flat foot robber so we can get the safety body that we like more in the D-gap down there. When we use our corner down versus single width, right, so again, that's the picture there, just so you can get kind of an overall theory of what we do. When this is single width here, we will use the corner, all right, down there and we'll use the safety back off the half. But the reason we do that is we want to take away some of those access, gift, easy throws, right? Now he's still going to be the D-gap 
force player, but he's doing it off of a wide receiver, not off tight end bodies. He's probably not going to get a ton of pullers out in space that he's got to hard joint and take on. So we already teach that coverage. It's not the structure of it. It's do we want that body type there when they add their body type. So when they add that body there, do I necessarily want that body there, even though it's easier for me at the safety spot because we already play that. Okay, so for us, the adjustment to nub is usually auto sky, flat foot robber, corner knows he's got to play the flat foot robber technique. Front side, I don't think it's an issue at all. It's our normal corners deal. That's your D-gap flat force player. Seven techniques already reached by alignment, so we just got to hold the point as a seven. All right, your mic's going to fit runs the way he always does. All right, uh, A-gap to over the top player, depending on flow and what he's seeing. And there's our ninth guy in the box, right? That's the extra player that we're trying to get in the box. This happens to be the tenth guy that we're trying to get in the box because they put more bodies in the box. Okay, so structurally for us, that is not really an issue. Um, again, I can't talk to you about how to defend um, how to defend what you're seeing because I don't know the runs and the passes that you're seeing. But structurally, for us, not that big of an issue. Skill set wise, yes, it's an issue. Do we have to teach corners to play flat foot robber? Do we have guys here? And I'm fortunate that, that we have one that doesn't mind sticking his nose in there. So he's okay doing this. He had to do it last year as a 10th grader. All right, not the biggest kid in the world, but very good football player, and he doesn't mind doing that. May not be the greatest matchup for him, but he's not going to be shy about it. Okay, so uh, do you have a kid that is going to stick his nose in there? Can he physically do it? Do you want him setting the edge versus those body types? So for us, it's more the offense being smart with what they create, and it did create a structural issue for us. It created a skill set issue or a teaching issue for us. It made us add something to the toolbox. Now, if this became, and again, I don't, I'm not really sure, coach said wing, I'm not sure if, it, if this becomes like tight end wing with a flank out there with, with two backs in the eye. Again, for us, I'm just going to talk about the structure. The tight end wing side, for, for me in general, base, early camp stuff, that makes me get out of quarters usually. All right, what I do is I add the nickel as almost a nine technique in between the tight end and the wing. And we now play this side as a cover two deal, and we basically turn it into a quasi five-man pressure. So we're going to put the nickel up here because we want this to be an issue right now. We want the wing to have to block him. All right, we want you know him to create issues if it's two back runs, if it's power or whatever runs you're seeing there. All right, we want him to make it an issue, so we now need him to set the edge. And then again, from this structure, especially like wing T stuff. We have to worry about these guys getting vertical. Now, they have to do a good job with their stems and what they do because they're, they're so compressed that it's hard for them to attack the landmarks on the field they'd like to attack. But they can both get down the field on us, which we have to certainly all right, be able to um, handle, and we've got to be able to rep. But they usually can't get the third and the fourth guys. Now, if they're in the eye, you know, they can get maybe four of them out. They could go wheel with other routes or whatever. But... You know, when it's wing T stuff and the backs are set like that, you really only have to worry about the vertical of what these two guys are doing because those two usually don't get to this side of the passing game in that system. So for us, the tight, the tight end wing would get us out of quarters. It would put us into an auto all right, cloud check on this side. And what we would do is the game plan usually versus tight end wing sets, base theory, camp rules, would normally get us to put the nickel up and bring him as a fifth rusher underneath the wing trying to make this an issue here. Again, base downs, early camp, that's what we would do. Obviously, we wouldn't go into a game plan saying that this is what we're going to do every time. All right, but excuse me, that would be one of the first things we would do to a tight end wing side. And the reason is I don't really like the quarter structure of how we support it. When these guys get so tight to each other, and now in quarters, the nickel would have to be in a position to play force, okay, to that side, because in quarters, that's what he does. Now it brings my corner and my safety real close together, and technically they're both making some type of almost man read off of corners making it off that, safety's making his quarters read off that. If both those guys block, now both of us have to get involved in the run, but the spacing of it gets a little bit dicey at times, so could you do it by rule? I think you can. Normally what we would end up doing if we wanted to stay at quarters theory and leave the nickel outside as a force player, these guys would have to get into some type of 
zone it deal where now you're going to defend the outside quarter, I'm going to defend the inside quarter. The hard thing with that is we also still need you from that theory in the, in the coverage world, we also need you to fit if one and two block. So that's why the quarter structure is, is great if it's, uh, especially with a wide out out there versus pro eye or uh, flanker, you know, tight end flanker stuff. The safety's always going to be in a position to fit those runs. We're fine with that. That's the ninth guy in the box. The corner doesn't have to be involved. They bring the wing in, which brings the corner in. Well, now the wing is usually going to be that third back that blocks a lot. If it's heavy personnel teams, this is two tight ends here. Well, now I might have to get the corner and the safety involved. All right, so again, auto check, first day, camp. And again, same body types. If we, we could also possibly change body types, but nickel goes there, corner goes into a hard alignment or a cloud alignment. So he's playing that. He's off the half. Mike goes under there. So this really becomes a five man. And on this side, it's like we teach our guys to play four under two deep. Right? So on this side, he's the vertical. Uh, I'm sorry, he's the, he, the hook two player. All right, he doesn't have to carry it vertically, but he's got to make sure he can widen it. Uh, wallet, make it go to the safety where he needs it, right? And we play this coverage with four under two deep with two, uh, you know, hook two players that, that and, and uh, cover two to both sides, and, and we play it as a track deal. So we are to carry four under two deep. So this side becomes that theory. This side would stay, right? We could stay in our sky theory. Again, if he gets wider, now we start getting into the world where we have our hawk adjustments and our cone adjustments, all right, and we also have our cloud adjustments. So if he gets wider, we have more things that we can do when he's out there. When he's tighter, right, so if it was double tight with a wing over there and it's that set, something like that, it just puts that corner back in there and it puts us in our sky adjustment and it just gives us skill set. Skill set issues, not structure issues. So hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, if Coach has more questions, he'll... Uh, he'll shoot it to me and then he'll diagram runs and what they're doing and passing game concepts and then I can get further into what we would be thinking about, alright? Remember tomorrow we've got Noma Zone, first speaker in our Play Fast Virtual Clinic series. Going to have 10 speakers now through July, every other Thursday. I've got the, uh, the dates mapped out and I'm going to roll those out soon. Got uh, some pretty good speakers lined up already. So uh, tomorrow night is $10. Uh, if you want to register, you can email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. I'll give you the info. I've got three pla platforms to pay uh, that, that, you can, that you can use. We've got Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, uh, all play fast football, 8740. So you can register through any of those platforms. Email me and let me know you're interested. And we're also doing a $70 season pass so that if you wanted all 10 speakers and maybe you couldn't be at one or you wanted the ability to get some of the videos that I am going to uh, record these sessions. They're going to be Zoom calls, so it's easy. We're going to record them, load them up to YouTube. I'm going to have them. They're not going to be public. They're going to be private, but I can share a link with anybody that registers. So if you're interested in Noma's own tempo offense, snag variations tomorrow, or if you're interested in the rest of the series we have uh, with 10 other speakers coming up, and I will get the full lineup and, and the full dates out to you guys, but it's going to be 10 sessions now through July all the way up till we start in August. Uh, so check it out. Play Fast Virtual Series. Why are we doing it? Couldn't get the in-person clinic done in 2023. Uh, really striving to get it done again in 2024 because I missed that atmosphere, the interaction with coaches, the setting that we had, and I think there's something missing uh, in the scheduling of in-person clinics and what in-person clinics are providing. So uh, check that out. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, turn your notifications on. Ring that bell so you know every time we do a video, we do YouTube Live. All right, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the video. Don't leave, like the video. Leave a comment if it's a comment about a video. Every once in a while, I try to do those, so I appreciate interacting with all you guys. All right, again, virtual clinic tomorrow night. Email sting8740 at gmail.com if you're interested in registering. Noma's own tip, uh, starting us off tomorrow night with our virtual clinic series. Appreciate everything you guys do for me. Hope you're well out there. Stay safe. Hope the weather starts clearing up for everybody in the Northeast. I know you guys got some snow again. Remember, you won't play well till you play fast, and I will see you next time.